we're in Dublin, we're in O'Neill's pub, which is just down the road from Trinity College, which is Ireland's oldest university. Very, very many famous physicists drank here in, in, in O'Neill's pub, including Ireland's most eminent physicist, Ernest Walton. Ireland, physics, it's sort of obvious that we're going to think about Guinness. So Guinness is a beer, is a stout, very, very much favoured in, in, in Ireland. In here we've got roasted barley, we've got um, hops, we've got yeast. We've got an awful lot of very interesting physics going on. Well, let's just start with the head first, this very famous head which looks white and creamy. First question is, well, why is it white? Well, if you looked at this under a microscope, what you'll actually see is that this is a foam. It's made up of thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny little bubbles. Unlike the vast majority of other beers, those bubbles actually have nitrogen inside them. This is what makes the, 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 the head on a pint of Guinness look so sort of aesthetically pleasing, look so, look so nice. Fluid is leaking out, gas is exchanging. If we could look at that in real detail, what we'd see is smaller bubbles shrinking, bigger bubbles growing. We'd see all this coarsening processes happening. It's, it's, although it looks completely static at that level, if we could zoom in, there's a huge amount of dynamics going on. And that's fascinated very, very many physicists. Lord Kelvin, for example, who was from Belfast, so depending on your point of view, another Irish physicist, was very, very interested in the, the physics of foam. And Kelvin actually thought the best um, description of the ether at the time, and sort of space-time, was that it was foam-like. And in fact, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of interesting debate as to the extent to which space actually is, is, is foam-like. But let's get back to the Guinness. One thing that has fascinated very many people is well, why has it got this particular colour? Why, why is it white? And obviously the, 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 the body of the beer, the body of the stout here is, um, well, most people think it's black. If you actually look at it carefully, it's all, more sort of ruby red. This arises from uh, how light scatters off these tiny, tiny bubbles. So we're familiar with the sky obviously being blue, and that's due to a process called Raleigh scattering, where the light Hit, it strikes molecules in the atmosphere and we get preferred scattering of blue light. This is a process that's actually called me scattering, where the particles, in this case the bubbles, are bigger. And in that case, pretty well, the light, there's no preferred wavelength. All the light is scattered and it's scattered effectively equally well, give or take a few little um, niceties here and there. One thing that's also very many people have thought about and, and wondered about and puzzled about and it was really only in 2004 that it was understood why this happened is that there's always been this large um, debate about do the bubbles go up or do they go down in Guinness and uh, many people have gone for one camp or the other and like many of these things it turns out that both are true but you'd say, well, of course, if you think of just about the physics, of course the bubbles are going to go up. There's a buoyancy there, there's a buoyant force that drives them up to the surface. Why would they ever go down again? And it turns out that you, again, it looks like so many things that look so straightforward and so mundane, the physics is, is actually really, really complicated to the extent where this is a paper, a really, really good paper, in a journal called The Physics of Fluids, which is an important journal for those interested in fluid processes. So what they're doing is they're trying to understand what the hell's going on in Guinness. And this is 2008, and I think it's fair to say that although they've got the, uh, quite a lot of the physics sorted out, there are very many things that they, they still don't understand. So this is really hardcore, where they've, they've looked at this in considerable detail, spent a lot of time thinking about this pro process. And you might think, oh, well, it's just bloody physicists or mathematicians counting angels on the head of pins. And how, you know, why can't they go and find something better to do than try and work out what's going on in Guinness? But the key thing is, if you understand these processes are going on in Guinness, the waves that form in Guinness, the way the bubbles move, are so important for so many industrial processes, so, many, so important for, you know, food industry and right across the board. The key piece of physics that's happening here is that there's a circulation, there's a current going on, there's a flow of liquid going on in the, in the, in the beer. So what happens is that the, in the centre, if we could look right in the centre, the bubbles there are moving up, but those, those bubbles actually move up and then when they get to the surface, they move towards the side. They entrain what's called train, they pull liquid with them and that pulling of the liquid sets up a flow, almost like convection, but it's different physics, but almost like convection, you get a flow. And so it goes up in the middle, out, and then goes down at the sides. And at the sides, the drag on the side of the, the glass leads to the, the bubbles actually being pulled down. So if you look at this with a high-speed camera, and it's actually a very, very tricky experiment to do, 
depending on where your depth of focus and where you're looking at in the, in the, in the glass, the bubbles either go up or they go down. Why do they always use Guinness in this, uh, for these experiments? Well, the reason they use Guinness is that those bubbles, and the reason those bubbles are, are, are form this wonderful froth is because they're nitrogen. They're not carbon dioxide, although they're a mixture of nitrogen and carbon dioxide, but the, the key ingredient here is nitrogen. And the diffusion of nitrogen is very different from the diffusion of carbon dioxide. And all the, the dynamics that's going on is influenced by the diffusion. In, in Guinness, the, the material in Guinness actually coats the bubbles and that coating, that surfactant layer, um, changes the dynamics of how the bubble moves through the, the fluid and really influences its velocity. And surfactants are really, really important again in terms of detergents, but not just in detergents, in a wide range of industrial processes. A lot of, of, of incredibly intriguing physics in every time you go to the pub. One of the other really interesting things about, about foam is that, well, what is it? Is it a solid? Is it a liquid? Is it a gas? Well, first of all, you might look at it and think, well, it's, it's, it's liquid, and certainly it'll flow like a liquid, but there are very few liquids you can, you can draw patterns in. So that's behaving very much like a solid. And yet also, if you look at how its pressure changes and its volume changes and in terms of if you change the temperature, it behaves like a gas. So it's like this mixed state between solid, gas, and liquid. So which is it, a liquid, a solid? Or it's all three. It's all three. It's all three. And it's no, no, <laughs> all three. So yeah, um, I was never conscious of the way I pronounced the word tree until I went to lecture in Nottingham. And the first set of questionnaires I got back were riddled with things like 33 and a third. So, um, <laughs> so yes, apologies. And it's very, very, um, how can I put it, embarrassing to be corrected on your pronunciation of the word tree by your five-year-old daughter. They say, no, daddy, it's not tree, it's three. So Kelvin was, was, was fascinated by foam and he tried to develop uh, or did develop um, a model for the, the, the most effective packing of dry bubbles, basically, um, in, in a three-dimensional foam. Now, in a two-dimensional foam, that's actually a, a very common um, structure. Um, and that's basically a honeycomb. That gives you the, the, the highest packing, the, the most efficient use of space, as it were. In three dimensions, it's unbelievably more complicated. And you have these structures, which I'm gonna cheat now, because I always forget what this is called. Identical 14-sided cells called tetrachi decahedra. And now, it was thought for 100 years that this was the, the most efficient packing. Now, it turns out that 100 years later, in Trinity College, just down the road, Weir, um, who's a professor of physics there, and his student, Phelan, um, found that there was a structure that was 0.3% better than the, the Kelvin model. Again, you might think, well, what are they arguing about 0.3%? Importantly, it's telling you a lot about the, 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 the energy in this system and how you can control and constrain the energy. The old one's here, and the new one's here. And so there's a difference. Here they're all identical cells. Here there are two slightly different types of cells, which give you a slightly better packing. In the foyer of one of the physics buildings in Trinity College, there's a model of this, which has also been used for one of the buildings for the Beijing Olympics. They, they exploited this type of structure. There's something called the equation of state. And many of you might have come across this is where you've got pressure, volume, and temperature. Pressure times volume is equal to um, number of moles times the gas constant times temperature. And with, uh, no, I'm not going to go there. It's too, it's, no. I'll, I'll end up buried in maths. So no. <laughs> From one aspect, this is quite interesting because you could argue that, well, it's a bit stereotypical that they've taken an Irish man from 60 symbols and dumped him in a pub. I, what's perhaps less stereotypical is that I'm teetotal, so I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol, so perhaps that's not quite so stereotypical, so I, I don't really drink Guinness. You're filming then. Go on. Nice.